What's up, you guys, and welcome back to our channel. Today is Tuesday. It is not only Tuesday, but it is Transparent Tuesday, where I come on here and I talk to you guys about how I'm actually feeling feeling about what's going on, what's happening, moving from a full-time job, going into a full-time entrepreneurship, and all of that other greatness and what I'm actually learning too as well. So I'm hoping to do this video in a one take. I want to be a one take wonder on today. Um, today we're going to talk about some of um, everything and it's going to be actually personal stuff of what I've been going through. So let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Um, so, you know, of course you guys know that this is going to be my last month in my job and going into December, I was like, um, okay, this is the last month. I had all these plans, what I'm going to do, do I need to execute for not only my full-time job, but what I need to execute in the month of December for freedom therapy, my private practice as well too. So um, I had this plan, I had this plan laid out, um, and everything. And then guess what? life started happening and life happened quickly and when i say about life personal things and my personal life started happening um that actually threw me off course if you looked at my video last week um last friday you know that my grandfather actually passed away and he passed away on december the 8th and that's when life just kind of stopped paused and you have to or you have to go into now you have to help out your family and be there for your family and grieve um so today we're going to talk really about how do you handle a death of a loved one when you're in private practice like what is it that you should do to actually protect yourself and actually protect your clients because when we are grieving we necessarily cannot help our clients like we are normally do because we're actually facing grief ourselves so what do we do as a um clinician like what do you do like do you take off work do you all of that other kind of stuff and that's what we're going to really talk about today so um i'll just give you a backstory about how it happened um i the week of the weekend of december the 8th it was a saturday and like for some reason a lot of my appointments had canceled and I was like, why are all these people canceling for whatever reason? And only one appointment confirmed. Like, everybody was canceling at the last minute, too. They were, like, I was waking up to people on Saturday morning saying, oh, Ms. Danielle, we need to reschedule, blah, blah, this, and that. And only one person had confirmed, and I was to see that person at 12 o'clock, right? So I'm going about my day and stuff like that. So um, my mom calls me around about 11 o'clock, and she was, because my grandfather lived in, um, Atlanta like we knew that it was coming because the doctor had already told him that it would be about seven to ten days but us men of faith you know we're praying we're you know we're believing that he's going to pull through this because he has pulled through this before and so my mom called me and she was like um she FaceTimed me so now now it's real serious so she was like I wanted you to talk to grandpa and I'm like okay so I see him and um, I know then, oh my God, I'm not going to cry. I know then that it wasn't, it wasn't going to be great. I knew that today, that day was going to be his last day. Like I just, you can see him and you can feel it. And I was like, I was like, hey buddy, how you doing? And, and like, it just, it was a lot. Let me say that. And um, I shout out goes to my mom because she had been over there for almost a week looking at that, seeing him like that. And it's like, I only experienced it for about like five minutes. And, um, it's like, it still, it still has me tearing up. And so, um, she was like, go ahead and say, you know, your final goodbyes and stuff. So I was like, Hey buddy. And you know, so I talked to him. I was like, I love you and all of this. And so, um, as I'm hanging up the phone, it's like 11 o'clock. My client's supposed to be here for 12. So it gives me enough time to gather myself for my 12 o'clock appointment because it was too late for me to try to counsel her because she was like, I, while I was hanging up the phone, I can hear her pulling up outside. And so I gather myself, get myself together, and um, go into her session. And for me, dealing work is good for me, okay, to dealing with the whole grief thing. 
And so um, I finished up with her, and so I called my mom back. So we were about an hour, and so um, about an hour and 15 minutes, I called her back, and I was like, hey, are you still there? And she was like, no. She was like, um, his wife, won she was like, we just left. And so as I'm talking to my mom, because my grandfather was in hospice care, um, I'm talking to my mom. He was at hospice care, Grace Home in Atlanta. And so I'm talking to my mom, and she was, and the wife comes out, and it's the hospice ladies. And she goes on to say, um, Mr. McClendon has transitioned on over. And it was like, world stop. <laughs> like, literally, and it was like, I'm so glad that it was a divine intervention that all my clients um, end up canceling. Because I had like a whole day after that, tw after that, um, after my 12 o'clock, like I had a whole day about like four or five people and everybody canceled and it was good that they canceled because I would have had to call and cancel them myself because I was not okay. Like once I heard the news, um, I just packed up and I left. And so, um, I went back home. I went to my house just to calm down Wusai and all of that other kind of stuff and so then the whole preparation of now getting over there now for the funeral so all of this begins and it just it just a whirlwind so people were texting me last week and I didn't respond so if you are one of my friends or associates and you text me last week and I did not respond that's why um I ended up having to go to work I text I went to work to my um full time job that Monday and I told him, Look, my grandfather passed away on Saturday and um I'm gonna end up needing to take off time. So all the plans that I had were like derailed for the whole rest of the month. All my plans are derailed because it's like now life is happening. Now I have to leave. My grandfather um, wanted to be buried in North Carolina. He was in Atlanta. So now I have to fly over to North Carolina because it's like an 18 plus hour drive and I just could not do it. Although we did have family members drive over there and stuff like that. So Monday comes and it's just like it really had me thinking like, I need to I need to put something in place within my practice that's going to deal with um like the loss of a loved one because I could not work. Um I ended up having to purchase a flight at the last minute. Um I purchased a flight I want to say on Monday and all of the flights were expensive. Um first starting off like the first flights that I was finding was like $732. And I was like, girl, girl, you know, um, what we getting $732 from, but you know, and so the stress of that. So it's like, if I would have been in my private practice and luckily in my full-time job, like people, like my clients had already started dwelling down, like I said. So like, it wasn't that many people coming to see me. I probably seen like two people in that whole day. So, you know, I was, you know, I was doing kind of other stuff. So, but you know, I'm looking for flights, trying to make sure that I get there. So the stress of that and trying to make sure that you have enough money to be there for your loved ones. So all of this is now that I've come back home and I'm actually settling down, getting back into real life. Like I'm thinking about all of this. Like I'm thinking about how I need to add these this into my business plan and about how I need to have money saved so that I can take off, so that I can be with my family. That's the whole purpose of really being an entrepreneur so that you can be there for your family. But um, so that's that. So that Monday, I text my clients immediately on that Monday, letting them know the the clients that I was supposed to see last week, I letting them know immediately like, hey, all appointments will be canceled for this week due to um the death of my grandfather. And I will contact y'all next week, the following week, to reschedule all of your appointments. I was supposed to contact them yesterday, but I didn't because I was exhausted. So I'm going to do that today, actually. And rescheduling appointments for this week. And it's like... um so I, and my clients was very were very understanding um a lot of people um said send that their condolences and all of that kind of great stuff and a lot of people was like just take off take your time you know like they understand like it's it's really important to have clients that understand so i took off i went over there and um was able to um go and be there for my family be there for my mom and a lot, of, I would say I experienced a lot of emotions that I wasn't expecting to experience. And um, I almost had a panic attack, like literally. Like I started, when we were walking into the um, 
I'm the type of person, like, I don't have to sit in the front row at funerals with family. Like, although I am family, like, I don't have to do that because I don't like to be in closed-in spots with a whole bunch of people around me. Like, I just can't. Like, I need my space. And so, you know, when you walk in with your family, like, all of y'all are squished. And so, um, my uncle, my great uncle, he was like, he was insisting, come on, you come sit over here with the family. You're, you know, your family. I'm like, no, I want to sit back here with my aunt from Virginia, <laughs> um, and stuff like that. And so, um, he's like, no, come on. So I get over there, we go to sit down and I feel myself like, like I can't catch my breath. And so like my, I was going to sit on the side of my mom. And so like my grandfather's wife was like, no, she wanted my mom on the side of her. So that was my out. I was like, oh, I got to go. I got to go, you know. And so, because I had to let her out. And so I, like, almost literally ran in the funeral home to go and sit over there with my aunt. And, like, I'm sitting over there and I'm, like, fanning myself. It's cold in North Carolina, by the way, y'all. And they had the air on in the funeral home. So I'm like, she was like, you're hot? I was like, I'm, she was like, you okay? And I was like, yeah, but thank goodness I knew the signs of what a panic attack looks like because I would have had a full blown panic attack whether if I would have stayed over there. And so I got over there to the side, did my deep breathing, calmed down, calmed myself down and sat there through the service and stuff like that. So that's, that's that whole thing right there with, uh, dealing with the death, you know, dealing with the death while you're going into private practice, me dealing with the death while I'm going into, um, so it, it really sparked up things that I need to write in my business plan and make sure that I'm prepared for. But I will say this, and one good thing that came out of this, um, so I end up my flight. Let me tell y'all about that. Let me tell y'all about how good God is. But, um, my flight, so, you know, like, I end up, when I first started searching, like, they were, like, $732, so then worked it out to where I can get a flight for, like, $400, and so, um, on my way back, the only thing is, it's called a budget-friendly flight or something, the only thing is, is that the airline chooses when you leave and when you return, so, and, and you could be bumped, too, so, so I was like, okay, so I was just prepared to, if I needed to be bumped or anything like that, so, you know, I had enough time, um, within my schedule so on my way back they um the airline was overbooked by seven people so i was like oh my god and <laughs> so um, i was like they're they're going to just like bump me all together and stuff like that and so um i was just like okay so it's it's overbooked by seven people and so they were looking for volunteers to give up their seats and so um i was like Okay, so I went up there to the guy, and I was like, um, are y'all still looking for volunteers? Mind you, before me, four people had already volunteered to give up their seats, and they needed seven. So I went up there. No, it was five. Five people had already volunteered to give up their seats, and it was, um, they needed seven seats. So I was like, okay. So I went up, because my mom was like, go up there and see. She said, because you, they'll compensate you. And I was like, really? They will? I was like, I don't know. So I went up there to talk to the guy, and he was kind of rude at first. And I was like, nope, I'm not giving up my seat or nothing like that. So later on, he comes to me, and he was like, Where your, where's your final destination? And I said, my final destination is Shreveport. And so um, he comes back. He goes back up there, and like all, he calls everybody over there because he was already telling the people how much they will get paid if their seats was given up. But then when he came to me, he said, um, he, he looked and his eyes got big because he saw it, he saw that where I was going. He was like, you're going to Shreveport, Louisiana? I was like, yeah. So then he said, um, he called everybody up there, all six of us. And he was like, because of this lady, talking about me, because of her, you guys are all going to get $1,000 for your seat. Y'all, I was like, what? And like the woman on the side of me was like, oh, thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. I was like, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he was like, because your flight, you're not going to be able to leave here until 1 o'clock. My flight was supposed to leave at 8.30 a.m. that morning. I got there at 6. And so he was like, your flight is going to be delayed. If you give up your seat, you're not going to be able to leave here until 1.16. I was, I was like, uh, $1,000? Baby, look, I just need to be back by Thursday. I don't care. <laughs> you know, like, I don't care at all <laughs> what happens. I just need to be back by Thursday. He was like, no, I'm going to get you home today, but I'm going to get you home at 5 o'clock. I was supposed to arrive at 1 o'clock, but I ended up getting home at 5. 
Baby, do what you want to do. Do what you want to do, okay? With it, just do what you want to do. And so, um, so we're boarding the plane and stuff like that. And so then he was like, Miss Bailey, you're gonna end up having to board the flight. I was like, dang. Dang, man, you know? And so he was like, but keep faith alive. He was like, because if I need your seat, I'm going to have, I'm going to, I'll come get you off the plane. And so um, I was like, okay. And so the lady was like, I'm sorry. She was like, man, you know how I hate that. So I get up, I go on the plane. I sit down, I put my stuff up on overhead. And so um, the other guy, the um, Caucasian ticket um, guy comes on, person that was taking the ticket, he comes on the plane. He asks for somebody. So that person wasn't on there. So he leaves off. And so then about two or three minutes later, he comes back and he said, Miss Bailey, we're going to need your your seat. Y'all, I grabbed my stuff. Like, I damn near ran off that plane. Y'all hear me? Like, I was like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And so on my way out, the flight attendant was like, so how much they're giving you for your ticket? Because you're getting off here mighty fast. And I say, they're giving me $1,000. He was like, I'll see you later. Like, oh my God, y'all, I ran off that plane so quickly. And I was like, I come out and like my girl, um, the lady who was sitting next to me, she was like, hey, cousin, you back, you back. And so because of me, everybody that gave up their ticket, uh, gave up their seat voluntarily, got $1,000. So the lady that was sitting on the side of me, her and her son, um, was traveling. So each ticket was worth a thousand dollars. So she got two thousand dollars and another lady ended up getting a thousand dollars too because they sold her ticket, they sold her seat to somebody else without her even knowing. But so it ended up turning out to be great and um and I Delta is going and that's flu Delta too, let me say that. Delta is actually going to send me a one thousand dollar American Express card. So that in that that in itself end up wrapping up the trip to be good. Um, I'm actually waiting on my um, gift card now. This should be overnighted to me. But that that was a way to turn a um, a not so great trip into end up being a good trip. The trip overall ended up being great. I was able to see some cousins that I haven't met. I was able to talk to some people, talk to my family and stuff like that. You know how you start meeting family members, cousins and all this other kind of stuff that you haven't met with funerals and stuff. So I was able to meet one of my first cousins. Um, her name is Kimberly, Kimberlyn. I was able to meet her, her, her and my, um, her father who is deceased. He died at 40, about like a couple of years, not a couple of years, about 10, 12 years ago. Um, he died from, from like a heart um, disease or something like that. So I was able to meet her and her mom and like she's going, she wants to be a uh, forensic psychologist. So of course, like able to share so much information with her and her mom. It was like, so it was a great, it ended up being a great trip, although it was a sad occasion. And then Delta giving me a thousand dollars for my seat was even better and things of that nature so y'all that is going to come to the close of how i've been feeling and what's been going on with me since last week um so before i close i want to wrap up some things i want to make sure that we um put into place in your business going moving forward is some kind of um policies dealing with death and how you will handle it and the nature of who whom the person is. It was my grandfather. So if that was my mother, um, I don't know how long I would need to be off. You know, it would be more than just a week, you know, because it's a death of my mother. So, you know, it's like we have to think about all of that. And I didn't think about it until it happened. So I want to share that with y'all. Y'all think about it now and be prepared for how you're going to handle it. So write it in your business plan. So also... Before I go, make sure we you start thinking about your 2019 goals. Um, I started writing mine down last night, and like I have like a whole bunch of stuff. But um, my I actually how much I want to make next year. I'm still in debate about that. I it's a high number, and I don't even know how I will make that much. But I I'm I'm, I'm interested. I'm like I'm going to try my best to make that much. Um, so I might share that with you guys. I'm not sure. Um, if you do vision boards, do your vision board. I am going to start working on that. 
So your 2019 goals, dream big, think high. Um, I got a whole bunch of projects that I want to actually push out in 2019. So it's just like your girl is not playing. Like my word for next year will be execution. Like I have to execute all of these dreams and goals that I have and things of that nature. And I encourage you guys to do the same. Um, so, but don't forget about Friday. On Friday, we'll talk about office space. We're going to talk about budgets and we're going to talk about business plans as well. I am in the process of writing my business plan and I'm also thinking about consulting, which I probably will consult with the business coach as well too um, to help me out with this business plan because I want to make sure that I actually invest in myself and get the things that I need and just really because I don't know how to run a private practice. I don't know about the business side. I'm just winging this thing along and I feel like to bring in some extra help will be great as well so that I can actually move my practice forward. So um, my practice right now is just me and I hope to have, um, I hope to actually hire at least two clinicians by July so that is one of my that is one of my goals to hire two clinicians by July and to actually have a office administrator um, as well. And I would have to actually because I only have one room, I would actually have to need more space in this building too. Um, when I first opened, I will give you this short story real quick. When I first opened, had my open house in my speech, I will I, I might have to put my speech up, but in my speech, I had said that I wanted to own not necessarily own but rent the rest of these office spaces in here because there's other business in here um and i want to i want to put other clinicians in there for my own personal business and stuff like that and so that's my goal so i want to like i think it's about like six or seven offices that are actually still open so my goal for 2017 is to at least have two of those offices for a for my clinicians and stuff like that so just really expanding and bringing people under um, bring people aboard to like, let's just really make this happen and things of that nature. So, and I also said in my, um, speech in my open house that I am going to be a multimillionaire by the time I'm 40. So, yeah. So your girl, like my dreams and my hopes and stuff like that is big. I am not one of those social workers that preach about us being broke no, sir. No, ma'am. I'm not one of those therapists that's talking about, oh, we broke and how we're not going to make money. No, there is money in this field. You just have to be creative enough to really seek out how to get the money. You can do products. A lot of people are doing products. I'm not sure why we don't push products in the South. I see a lot of more, um, People up north pushing their own books, pushing their own planners, like stuff like that. We can do that too as well. You have to have that passive income and that's what I'm going to work on too next year. Like we have to have multiple streams of income coming in and that's what I'm learning in order to get to where we need to be. But a lot of people just focus solely upon therapy. Like I'm not just focusing solely upon therapy next year. I'm focusing on products. I'm focusing on workshops. I'm focusing on master class. I'm focusing on stuff that I can do one time, make a video, and then post it, and then have people to actually start buying into it that way. And then I'm working on classes where I can get multiple groups of people in one setting and make money that way. So the money is out there. We just have to be creative. So that's what I'm going to say. I'm done for the day with my whole little rant. If you stuck to the end of this video, congratulations. You have made it to the end. I will talk to you guys on Friday. Bye, later, holla. Make sure you actually like, subscribe, share, comment below. Let's really get this community moving. And I will talk to you guys on Friday. And I actually did this in one take. One take wonder. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.